My name is Dr. Lindsay George. I am an attending physician in hematology at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and an instructor of pediatrics at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. George recently presented findings on sustained factor IX expression in hemophilia B patients after gene therapy. Gene therapy for hemophilia has actually been in clinical investigation for approaching two decades. Uh, so there's been quite a bit of work that has gone into uh, gene therapy efforts for hemophilia, the bulk of which has coalesced around the use of recombinant adeno-associated or AAV viral vectors, uh, which can be delivered uh, in vivo, so they're actually delivered by peripheral intravenous infusion, uh, and uh, the, with the goal of going to the target organ, the liver, which is the natural site of uh, synthesis of the, both the factor VIII and factor IX protein. Because of that, we've learned quite a bit about the safety of, of uh, recombinant AAV vectors. The primary challenge, however, has been an immune response to uh, the AAV capsid, which thankfully hasn't posed any major safety concerns, but has resulted in limitations of efficacy. And so what we've observed, or you know, working hypothesis, is that there's a, a T cell response uh, that happens to the uh, capsid of the recombinant AAV vector when it's presented on the surface of transduced hepatocytes. And this can result in clearing of those hepatocytes and therefore not, no longer making the, either the, the factor uh, nine uh, protein. So we have infused uh, nine patients with a, a viral vector. This was a phase one, two st study, so we're looking at safety and secondarily at efficacy. What I think is helpful among these nine patients is they're actually, I think, nicely representative of at least the North American hemophilia population. I think there's been a couple advances um, in particular that were presented in this trial. The first is that uh, we have incorporated the use of uh, a variant uh, transgene, so a, a naturally occurring mismutation of, of factor IX, termed factor IX Padua, described in a family from Padua, Italy. Um, and what's important about this is that this allows us to have higher levels of factor IX expression. Uh, you know, you, you get approximately eight-fold higher activity relative to the amount of protein that you're expressing, so we get higher levels. Uh, the vector incorporated a novel bioengineered capsid, uh, which we're hoping will allow this to be available to potentially a couple you know, more people. Um, and then importantly, we were able, because, we're, uh, because we have developed sort of a very efficient uh, vector uh, expression cassette, we're able to have, use a lower dose. And the idea is that the risk of this immune response appears to be dose related. So if you can use a lower dose, you, you may be able to minimize the risk of this immune response to the capsid. The capsid is termed SPARK100, which is proprietary, but uh, developed by the sponsor of the study. We incorporated the use of a factor IX Padua transgene, which actually has been used in prior clinical trial. Um, and uh, we, again, we, what I think is remarkable about the study is that we were able to achieve uh, what has thus far been reported as the highest levels of factor IX activity, um, and actually achieved at the lowest vector dose. So from a safety standpoint, uh, there have been no, among those nine patients, there have been no unexpected procedure or vector-related adverse events. And from an efficacy standpoint, what we know about hemophilia is that the uh, clinical phenotype is closely correlated with the levels of factor activity. So among the nine patients treated, the mean factor nine activity is 28%. Um, and so what we saw, uh, as you might expect at levels of 28%, is a remarkable reduction in, remarkable and significant reduction in both bleeding events as well as factor use. And to put that in a little bit perspective, I think for people that follow hemophilia, is, uh, that's resulted in more than 1.1 million units of factor saved, which accounts for more than uh, $2.1 million of, uh, saved in U.S. dollars. Um, so it's been quite a dramatic improvement. I think from the standpoint of early phase trial, I think this gives us a lot of great information, and certainly we, we look forward to evaluating this in phase three study, and, and I think that will be uh, much more helpful to gather more information. I'm very optimistic about this as a therapy. I think one thing that's really interesting about the field of gene therapy right now is that there's quite a bit of activity, and I think that signals that there's a high likelihood for success. Uh, but I think the story is to be continued.